Hello and welcome back everyone. So today we will learn how to do a simple interrupted switcher. So I'm going to be talking a bit about the instruments first that are required to practice any kind of switcher. You can always buy these from the Amazon affiliate links given in the description below. Uh, but if you want to directly jump on how to do a simple interrupted suture, you can do that by clicking on the timestamp below. So the first thing you are going to be needing is a suturing pad. Now I recommend you to buy a suturing pad as they are not that expensive and they will really help you in practicing how to do a proper suture. The reason why I recommend you to buy a switching pad is because they have multiple different types of incision on them and they also resemble very closely to the actual tissues. This will really help you on how to properly close an incision. But if you cannot buy one then a banana peel or an orange also works as a fine alternative. The second thing you will be needing is of course a suture. Now you can use any kind of suture. I am using a silk 30 suture over here which is the most commonly used suture inside the oral cavity. The third thing you will be needing is a tissue forcep. Now there are two different types of tissue forcep. There is a non-beak one or the toothless and then there is the beak tissue forcep or otherwise known as the tooth tissue forcep. This over here is a tooth tissue forcep and you will be needing this because in exams you need to use the tooth tissue forcep as it allows you to have a much better grip on the tissues. But you need to remember not to grasp the tissue very tightly as it may damage the tissues and tear them because the beak is quite sharp. So moving on the next thing you will be needing is a pair of scissors to cut the suture thread. As you can appreciate these scissors over here are not regular scissors these are special suture cutting scissors because they have a hook in the end for the suture thread to lock in place so that you can cut it much easily. And trust me it helps out a lot when you are working in a small environment such as the oral cavity. And finally the last thing you will be needing is a needle holder. Now I want to talk in detail about this as it is really important. So here I have another instrument which at first glance may be looking like another needle holder but it is not. It is actually an instrument known as the artery forcep or also known as the hemostat. Now both the instrument may be looking very similar to you but they have many differences between them which you need to know. So when I open the needle holder you can appreciate that the needle holder has a crisscross type of pattern. This crisscross pattern allows for a better secure grip of the needle so that the needle is locked securely and does not slip while you are performing suturing. While when you open the artery forcep you will appreciate that it does not have a crisscross pattern rather it has a grip which is arranged in parallel pattern. So the holding part of the needle forcep is arranged in crisscross while the holding part of the hemostat is arranged in a parallel pattern. There are also other differences between the two but a student tends to forget those minute differences so it is better to be sure just by opening up the needle holder and checking the grip pattern. Remember that you should never try to do a suture with an artery forcep not in your exams and neither in your clinical practice. Because when you try to hold a needle using the artery forcep it will slip and slide between the parallel grooves and you will never have a secure grip on the needle. So on the face of it both artery forcep and the needle holder look very much alike and hence you should always open the lock of the two forcep and check whether it has a crisscross pattern or the parallel pattern. So onto the needle holder so first let's look at the grip. So the traditional way of holding a pair of scissors is by placing your thumb and the middle fingers in the holes of the scissors. But for performing suturing you will be needing a different grip. Start by moving your thumb and the ring finger inside the two holes of the needle holder. Place your forefinger on the neck of the needle holder just like that. And finally wrap your middle finger around the neck of the needle holder so that you can have a firm grip of the instrument. Let's do this once again. Pass your ring finger and your thumb in the holes of the needle holder. Place your forefinger on the neck of the needle holder. And finally wrap your middle finger around the neck of the holder. Just as I have done in this video. 
Now this grip is really important because it allows for a better grip and handling on the needle itself and also for a quick opening and closing of the needle holder's lock. Of course you will learn to modify this grip a little bit according to your own style but this is the most fundamental grip and is very important that you make a habit of holding the needle holder with this grip. Talking about the last thing, the lock of the needle holder. So there are three levels to the lock on the needle holder. Each level allows for a more firm grip on the needle. For locking the needle holder, you just need to squeeze the two ends of the needle holder with your thumb and the ring finger. Now when it comes to opening the lock, it is here where your middle finger comes into play. To open the lock, you just simply need to squeeze the needle holder a little bit and pull apart the needle holder with the help of your middle finger and your thumb, each exerting force in the opposite direction. Remember that you don't have to open the needle holder like a scissor, otherwise it won't open. You need to pull the lock apart by exerting a downward and an upward force, one with your thumb and the other with your middle fingers. Don't worry, this may seem hard in the beginning, you may even get muscle soreness in your hand but after practicing a couple of times over and over again, I'm sure you will get a hang of it and will be able to do any suture effortlessly. Now let's start with the suturing. So first I will grab the needle holder in my dominant hand and then with the help of the needle holder I will grab the needle at approximately 2 thirds of its length. Then on the other hand I will grab the tooth tissue forcep and hold one side of the incision line. After that I will pass the needle from that side of the incision line. Once the needle is through enough, I will unlock the holder and let go of the needle and grab the needle by the other end with the needle holder again. Once the needle is through, I will put the tissue forcep on the table and grab the needle with my fingers and pass the thread all the way through to the almost end. Now we will repeat the process again, grab the needle at two thirds, lock the needle holder in place. Grab the tissue on the other side of the insertion line with the help of the tissue forcep. Pass the needle through with approximately 2 cm away from the insertion line just like that. Once you see that enough of the needle is through, unlock the holder. Grab the needle from the other side and rotate your hand that will pass the entire needle through. Once the needle is through, grab the needle with the help of your fingers and pull it all the way just keeping enough end of the thread left. So now the suturing thread is through both sides of the line. Now comes the knot part. So it's very simple, you just need to concentrate. So my left hand, the hand in which I have the needle and the rest of the thread, I will rotate that around the holder. You simply need to loop the thread around the needle holder. Looping two times is better. After I have successfully done that, I will grab the other end of the thread, the end that I left. I will grab that with the help of the needle holder. After that, I will just simply pull the needle holder through the small loop. I will tighten the knot so that the incision line is all closed and the two sides are connected but not too tight so that the two sides become overlapping. Do make sure that the needle is secure because not only it is dangerous for the patient if the needle is just dangling but it is also dangerous for you and the people working around you. So we'll repeat the same process and loop the thread around the holder in the same manner. Grab the other end of the thread with the help of the needle holder, lock it and pass it through and finally tighten the knot. And we will put in just one more knot in order to secure the suture but this time to make it more secure I will go in the opposite direction as the first two. So this time I will loop the thread around the needle holder in an anti-clockwise fashion. Same process will be repeated here but only the looping of the thread around the holder is in the opposite direction. And before you are done, grab the needle holder with the other hand and grab the scissors, cut the thread from both the ends, just make sure to leave a bit of the thread and not cut it at the very end, otherwise the knot will unwind itself later onwards. And there you have it, a simple interrupted suture. So after practicing this a couple of times, you will realize that you can do this suture in much fewer steps that will save you a lot of time in clinical practice. You can do that by passing the needle through the tissues present on both ends of the suture line in one go. Let me show you how that's done. So let's do this once again but this time I will pass the needle through the tissues in one go. I will grab the needle by its two thirds, grab one end of the tissue with the help of the forcep, pass the needle through that side of the incision but I won't pass it all the way. Now I will let go of this end of the tissue and grab the other end of the tissue with the help of the tissue forcep and pass the needle through this end. Then I will grab the needle with my other hand, 
pass the thread all the way while keeping soft pressure on the pad. Now I will rotate the thread two times around the holder. Grab the end of the thread with the help of the needle holder, pull it through and tighten. Same process will be repeated. If you wish you can end at the second knot, you can do that by looping in the opposite direction and making the suture secure. But I personally like to do 3 knots as my seniors have taught me and I have also seen in my personal experience that 3 knots really keeps the suture secure. But 2 knots are also really great so if you want to go with 2 knots then by all means you can go with 2 knots. Finally the last knot which will be in the opposite direction. After I have tightened the suture just enough, I will cut the thread and I'm done. Now sometimes in clinical practice, you may encounter a certain situation where you have limited access or limited visibility, then you have to pass the needle through one by one and you don't need to rush, otherwise you will end up damaging the tissues. Now I recommend you to practice first by passing the needle one by one rather than trying to do it in one go. After you have practiced that a couple of times and you are familiar with the instruments and the grip, then you can move on to the next shortcut step of passing the needle through two sides of the incision in one go. So we'll do it in one last time before we end this video just to recap. So like I've stated in this video time and time again, I will be repeating the things that you should absolutely follow. Remember to grab the needle at two thirds of its length. Make sure that you are leaving at least 2 cm of the tissue from the incision line, otherwise the tissue will just tear itself. Try entering the needle in the tissue at 90 degrees. Make at least 2 knots, one by looping in the clockwise direction and the other one by looping in the anti-clockwise direction. Or if you are doing 3 knots, then the first 2 knots will be in the clockwise direction and the third knot will be in the anti-clockwise direction. Do remember to tighten the knot just enough, not too tight in order to blanch the tissues or too loose that the insertion line is not closed. You can get all the things that I'm using in this video from Amazon by clicking on the Amazon affiliate links given in the description and start practicing yourself because this is something that you need to practice again and again so that you can develop your muscle memory and speed and skill in practicing suturing. No need to worry at all if in the beginning the grip is hard for you or you are having trouble handling the instrument or making the knot, you will get the hang of it in no time. Just keep on practicing this simple interrupted suture again and again as it is the most basic form of suture and also the most used form of suture in dentistry or any other medical field. Comment down below if you still have any confusion regarding the procedure and I will try my best within my knowledge to answer them or I will answer them in my next video in which we will learn how to do some different type of suture. Until then, I will meet you people next time. Take care and goodbye.